Um, you had an encounter, you were really desperate while you were in the jungle because you weren't making headway and you had a fundamental background. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what happened? Yeah, I mean, what a missionary needs the most is the Holy Spirit right. and a relationship with the Holy Spirit, the anointing, that a biblical term, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And I, I did not have that. I had the word of God. And I thought, well, that's all I need is the word plus mm -hmm. nothing. But, you know, it's word and spirit. So right. I got desperate one night under the mosquito net all night praying. I said, Lord, uh, you've got to come and reach these people. You sent us here to reach this village. And he spoke to me, not audibly, but he spoke to me and said, I did not bring you here to reach these people. I brought you here to reach you. Wow. <laughs> and if I could reach you, I could reach anyone. And it just it busted me. My heart broke. I spilled open. I poured out my heart that early <laughs> morning as the sun was coming up. And I went through the village and I asked every single person. It took me all day from dawn to dusk. And I asked every person to forgive me for not showing them the love of Christ mm -hmm. and being the, the representative of, of God's son, Pab Machi, in their language, that I, I wasn't reflecting him. And would they come and listen as I gave them the pure gospel? And they started crying and the, the village was just in an uproar. The Holy Spirit over the next 48 hours swept through. And indeed, he reached that village, virtually converting everyone. Wow. Church was formed. Leaders eventually set in place. And, uh, you know, another piece of our story is that after we left the village, it was overrun by the drug cartel. And they kidnapped the three missionary men that uh, they left the wives and kids, but they kidnapped the men and later killed them in the jungle. Mm. My best friends were martyred. They're from our village, and I handpicked them. So I had to get healing. I had to get mm -hmm. survivor's guilt mm -hmm. uh, healed uh, from my soul. Mm -hmm. And uh, that happened up in Toronto. And I was, it, God just, you know, he, he, he's faithful. If we have a need, he's going to be there to meet it, whether it's financial, emotional, Absolutely. relational, right. spiritual, it Whatever sounds kind of sounds He's a little faithful. similar to the Heidi Baker story too, because she had been a traditional missionary with her husband Rollin, whose grandfather was a, a well-known author, uh, and in China, right? So uh, yeah. she went there and and was very frustrated, and the Lord just so touched her in Toronto uh, that now it's touched thousands of people around the world. Yeah, I think the key to revival is you being revived, and right. if we if revival depends on you. How close are we? Right. You know, to realize that it's not the politics, it's not the institutions, it's not even the seven mountains, it's the heart. Mm -hmm. And when God breaks through one heart, then he can pour out and touch a city. Mm -hmm. He can touch and influence an entire segment of our culture. Right. And there's something very humbling about the Holy Spirit doing that to us. He's kind, but it's also a firm message that I heard John Wimber say, I've seen your ministry. Now I'm going to show you mine. <laughs> you know, like, oh I really like hit him. He said, like, oh, yeah, I was putting a lot of effort in, but it wasn't Holy Spirit led. And that changed everything. But think about what you said about the village um, when you went and, and asked for forgiveness to the, um, mm. the villagers. At, like a revival started. I mean, because people got really touched by the Holy Spirit and there was transformation while you guys were there, I mean, think about what we need now in our nation is is the, the reconciliation and restoration of the, the, the hard hearts and the anger and it, the hatred. And, you know, God can do that. It's not impossible, right? Oh, yeah. He has more than enough resources. Yeah. He's looking for a dispenser. He's yes. looking for an outlet. That's great. And if we will humble our heart and turn back to him, then he can pour out of us like a mighty river of Ezekiel right. and, and can convert and bring life and healing. Yes, yes. So I'd like to know how the Song of Solomon and Holy Spirit kind of combined in your life to, to kind of arrest <laughs> you and say, wow, there's a whole angle here that I've never seen before in this uh, forbidden book, Song of Solomon. Uh, yeah, like so many, I had avoided that. Uh, I skipped over that and genealogies and Leviticus. I confess, <laughs> as I read through the Bible, I, I just, I missed some. And Song of Songs was eight chapters that I virtually skipped over because it would just gobbledygook. It didn't make any sense to me. 
But like so many in the early 90s, Mike Bickle began to teach on the Song of Songs and it kind of piqued my interest. And I decided to dive into the book myself. I bought commentaries. I did research. And then I wrote a book called The Journey of the Bride that it it sold, I don't know, 10,000 copies. It was okay. But uh, it really launched me into this passion to know God intimately. And I have to say, Peter, you know, to admit that I'm a bride, you know, <laughs> that to jump that masculine hurdle right. of, of touching the feminine part of our being, mm-hmm. that I want to yield myself to God. Mm. And if it means that intimate place where I'm vulnerable and I'm undone and I, I don't have answers and I, I, I'm not trying to compose myself, then so be it. Right. And that just, I crossed the threshold. And I joyfully, gleefully dove into the revelation of the Song of Songs, and I saw it unfold in front of me. I honestly had so many encounters with the Holy Spirit that he taught me through that book. And I knew when I started the Passion Translation that that would be the first book Mm -hmm. I wanted to tackle. And uh, so we did it. But yeah, I love, thanks for asking that question because I love the Song of Songs. It needs to be, you know, we used to tell everybody to start reading the book of John right. when you come to faith. Start with John. I think we need to switch that and tell every new believer, start with the heart of the Bible, which is the Song of Songs. And the arteries go out into the Gospels, Pauline theology, and into the Old Testament histories. But the heartbeat of heaven is divine romance that Jesus is the king. We are the Shulamite. Right. Solomon and Shulamite is the same Hebrew root word, one mm. masculine, one feminine. Mm. We are one with Jesus Christ. Yeah. And when you start there, then the Gospels will make more sense, Paul's teaching, etc. Well, that's so. what I was going to say. You can feel the fingerprints of the Song of Solomon on Philippians and Ephesians and you know that place where it says that he's been given, the Holy Spirit's been given as a down payment and you compare it to a wedding ring, you know, the yeah. promise of what will mm-hmm. come. And I had never seen that picture. It's such a beautiful illustration of the, it's a covenant. Where, like, I give the, the ring, but we're not married. Merely more of an engagement <laughs> ring, not a wedding ring. An engagement ring. It's a sign of the covenant and, and the promise of what's to come. It's a, yeah. it's a brilliant analogy. Yeah, just think if, if the Holy Spirit gifts fruit, wisdom, and power, is the down payment, the engagement ring. What is the wedding? <laughs> what is the marriage going to be like? Right. The union where two mm. become one. It's not right. good for the son of man to be alone. Mm. So we're going to be joined to him. And the, the Holy Spirit is that, that, that payment, the down payment, the pledge, the engagement ring, arabon in the, in the Greek. And it is used in Greece today as engagement ring. So mm. I love it. Yeah. For you? And the other part that hit me is it's not just something God dumps on you and then you automatically have this power. There has to be a relationship with Holy Spirit. And, and that is partly that crucifying your flesh every day, that Jesus said, pick up your cross daily. Because in order for him to break through our noise, we have to first submit ourselves and say, I want you to do that. He doesn't force himself on us. But really, the, there's an unlimited amount of power available as long as our motive is right. And it's not like the Lord of the Rings where everybody wants the ring until they get it and then it exposes the corruption in them. This is more like, no, Lord, I want you to flow through me and do wonders through me, but not not me. Let you shine through me. It takes a while to get there. (laughs) Yeah, I like Galatians 5.16. It says, if we walk in the Spirit, we will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Mm -hmm. So walking in the Spirit is the key to uh, dominion and reigning and ruling and overcoming. It's the Holy Spirit replacing us with the life of Christ within that exchanged life. Everything I have in Christ is borrowed. I have nothing but my faith in that finished work in the, in the fullness of Jesus. I have nothing to offer God. I'm not sufficient. It says 2 Corinthians 3, 5, to think anything as of myself, but my sufficiency is of Christ, who made me an adequate minister of the new covenant, mm. not of the letter, but of the spirit. Right. For the letter kills and the spirit gives life. So let's just get real practical. Um, how did you start developing that intimate walk with the Holy Spirit? 
other than, I mean, I know we, we, we're just sitting in his presence, but I'd like to hear what happened with you. Yeah, for me, it, it is exactly that. It's sitting in his presence, and I, I committed to spend an hour in prayer and then an hour in the Word. And then that grew to two hours each uh, uh, in, this, in, this, in just quietness before God, praying out my heart. Anything that would surface, I'd, I had to empty it out and give it to God. And then to pour out my heart in intercession for the people I love, for the people that need Jesus. And then turning my heart to the scriptures, and it was like a clean slate, the, the blood of Jesus. I was thinking this morning out when I was doing my four-mile walk, I was just thinking how, how the blood of Jesus is what cleanses me. Amen. So I say, Lord, I don't know theologically if I t- am supposed to keep asking you, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Amen. Cleanse me again with Amen. your blood. Amen. Let it go into my conscience. Let it go deep into my innermost being. Wash away guilt, shame. And I think just that that longing for intimacy, yeah. that expectation that he is accessible, that and he's reciprocal. If I take a step toward him, he will respond and he will draw near to me. Yeah. So knowing the grace of God in that intimate relationship, that's been my that's been my uh, strength. Would so, you mind just releasing that over our audience because there was such an anointing on when you were just saying that of of somebody who has seen both sides of this and it's so much better being the yielded vessel that he pours yeah. through instead of our efforts. Yeah, the first two words of the Song of Songs is let him. Yeah. Mm. And I think let him be life, let him. It's God plus nothing equals everything you need. Lord, I just release over all the viewers this day, Lord, that effervescent, Amen. intimate life mm-hmm. in Christ where in spite of us, weakness, frailties, and failures, Lord, that we draw near in grace, the blood-sprinkled path that leads into your heart, Mm -hmm. that comes into the throne room, Lord. By the new and living way of Hebrews 10, we come boldly, confidently, where mercy kisses us, grace washes us. Release that cleansing flow, Lord over those who feel like they're inadequate, like they're failures, like they they don't measure Mm -hmm. up. Lord, that they're, they compare to somebody else. Lord, I ask that you deliver us from all of that. And just come, Lord, right now. Fill the space in this Zoom call, Lord. And find a nest deep in our soul where you will live, abide, and grow and flourish until you have conquered every part of us in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Thank you, Brian. Amen. That was beautiful.